now on the Soto is a high selector. Engines, railway vehicles, waterway vehicles, and air vehicles. Day and night, the top of hat keeps everything and his engines running like clockwork. All the engines were a bit busy at work, except for John, who has gone missing. Oh, um, hello, James, said Lady. Any luck finding John yet? No, said James. Any luck finding, um... George the Seamower? No, not recently, said Rosie. Come on, Rosie, we don't want this, um, yogurt to turn into butter. And, and Lady and Rosie steamed away. And James steamed away with his passenger train. So, is, um, the boss here yet? Nope. Not yet. He, he hasn't, um, shown up yet. Speaking of the boss, said Philip, here he comes right now. Ah, my fellow steam engines. It seems as you all accounted for. Let's see here. Ari, Bert. Diesel, Mavis, Boko, Daisy, Jeffrey, Derek, Salty, Dennis, Frank, Bear, Bulgy, Me, and Archie. Who has made the wise choice of rejoining us. We're gonna need all the help we can get. I called you all to discuss a very important matter. Now, pay attention, because I'm only going to say this once. In the year 2000, a man named P.T. Boomer was trying to destroy a riot owner engine on his lady. But then, however, Boomer escaped from jail and is on again of humans and diesels, including Diesel 10. need is some radios in case if we need any of contact of each other. Some exploding devices in case if we make any booby traps if any of the engines try and capture any of the engine. An armor to make us bold proof. Now then, are there any questions? There was a very long silence. Very well then, said Spencer. Come on, you all. Are you ready for this? Oh, we're ready. We're ready for anything.
Boomer thinks his plan will succeed. He thinks no one knows about it. He thinks no one will try to stop him. Well, you better think again, Boomer. Because you are going down. Meanwhile, Thomas had brought in some brought in Hector with some other great cars to Brendam Docks. Barry was already there with some coaches. As soon as the conductors were subdued, Barry set off. But as Barry was going over a hill, the coaches were too heavy. Barry wrapped his, in his engine as hard as he could. Then the coupling snapped. Barry kept on going, not noticing that the coaches felt lighter than air. As soon as Thomas had dropped off I dropped off his train. He steamed away. Suddenly, there was a siren. What's going on? said Porter. Cranky look. Runaway coaches! He shouted. Porter quickly raced onto the other line. Switch them onto my line, said Thomas. I can handle do those coaches. The coaches race past the switch and buffered up to Thomas. Meanwhile, Ryan was helping Henry with the freight train. As soon as Henry made it down the hill, Ryan steamed back on the bridge. Just then, Harold flew in. And he saw Thomas and the runaway coaches. And he saw Ryan. Ryan, said, said Harold. Runaway, Thomas and the runaway coaches are coming. What? said Ryan. Ryan went to go see what was going on. Then he saw Thomas and the runaway coaches. Flatten my fenders! cried Ryan. And he raced up to the other line. Ryan watched as Thomas Miss Passed by, along with Barry's, Barry's coaches. Neil, however, saw Neil was coming in with some passengers, and he saw Tom. And he saw Thomas coming in with, with the coaches. Uh oh, dear," said Neil, and he raced backwards. Stanley and Stanley, Albert and Terrence watched as Neil was running away from the coaches with Henry pulling a freight train. Then Henry had run into Neil and Neil had came off the track. Thomas braked as hard as he could. He braked just a few free feet, just a few inches from the side of Henry's boiler and Neil. Whoa, that was close," said said Terence, Albert, and Stanley.